Afterwards Makoto finds out that the Academy's festival is approaching, and he explains that people from all over the land gather to see this festival, and every shop is filled to capacity. This event lasts for a whole week, and it livens up the city like no other. Shiki tells Makoto that the festival also involves a competitive tournament, and he mentions that Makoto's students are quite excited about this. In this tournament guests from Limia and Britonia are invited to evaluate the talent of the next generation through diplomatic conferences, and Makoto realizes that this is like job hunting for students. He hopes that nothing bad happens, and the scene cuts to him in his store. Shiki tells him that he would like to discuss their inventory for the festival with him, and Makoto states that the list of additional items is going to arrive tonight, and they should discuss this after it's here. Ludo then comes there, and he mentions that the two of them should check out the festival together, but Makoto states that Tomoe and Mio will be coming to the festival and Ludo should go with them. Makoto then tells Shiki that they should bring in some dwarves as additional staff, and Ludo mentions that Makoto really is kind to demi-humans, and he wonders if he just hates humans. Makoto asks Ludo to just get out of here, and Ludo leaves saying that he will take care of some work at the guild. Afterwards Makoto states that he can't believe that Ludo is the guild master, and he thinks that during the festival he will be meeting important people. He has heard that he uses the name false while interacting with others, and Shiki mentions that he has heard that he once conducted rather intriguing experiments, and he would like to know more about this research. A temple priest then comes to meet Makoto, and he introduces himself as Shinai. Makoto apologizes to him for not being able to speak, and the temple priest wonders if this is due to a curse. Makoto states that it is, and he wonders what he can do for the priest. The priest mentions that some people are concerned that Makoto's medicines are too effective for their price, and Makoto is glad that this is not about the goddess. He wonders if the priest is hoping for a bribe, and the priest states that such nonsensical rumors are going to be a bother for Makoto, so he has a suggestion for him. He wonders if Makoto has ever considered allowing temples to handle sales, and Makoto doesn't understand what he means. The priest then mentions that the temple will help clearing up any rumors, but they have a condition, and they ask Makoto to reveal his production methods. The priest mentions that it's so that the temple can inspect them, and he assures him that they are not going to leak this information to other shops. Makoto states that the temple can produce similar products if he reveals his production methods to them, and the priest requests his understanding on this matter. Makoto then thinks that several members of the temple were also involved in the humanoid experiments, and the previous bishop was one of them, and he suddenly died an unnatural death at the hands of Rona. He thinks that it wouldn't hurt to have connections with the temple in case the unexpected happens, and he agrees to share his production methods with the temple. The priest asks him to come to the temple tomorrow in this case, and the scene cuts to Makoto at the temple the next day. He notices that the temple is quite big, and he can't believe that this entire building is dedicated to worshipping that shitty goddess. He thinks that the goddess doesn't deserve something so grandiose, and they meet the bishop. The bishop appreciates their devotion to the goddess, and she mentions that the temple is going to clear up all the misunderstandings regarding their store. She states that she has heard that a chronic condition has rendered Makoto mute, and she mentions that they will also try to devise a solution for this. She then leaves with her aides, and Shinai asks Makoto about the procedure to make their medicines. Makoto mentions that his alchemist will tell them about this, and Shinai states that while the alchemists are working, he would like to ask Makoto a few things. The scene cuts to the two of them talking, and Shinai asks Makoto how long he has been a merchant. Makoto mentions that it's been less than three years, and Shinai can't believe that Makoto has opened up shops in two cities in such a short duration. He wonders if Makoto has a major backer, and Makoto states that he doesn't have a backer, but the Rembrandt Trading Company has been kind to them. Shinai states that this doesn't sound like the Rembrandt they know, and he mentions that it would be great if he were this cooperative with the church. Makoto then remembers that Rembrandt stopped worshipping the goddess after that thing with the disease, and Shinai wonders if Makoto looks after his daughter because of his connection with him. Makoto states that Rembrandt asked him to keep an eye on his daughters, as he loves them dearly, and Shinai mentions that he might have to change his opinion of Rembrandt. Afterwards Makoto and Shiki leave, and Shinai tells the bishop that they are having their servants follow them. The bishop mentions that he is just wasting his time, and she tells Shinai to get her approval on all matters concerning Makoto from now on. She explains that their examinations of his mind and mana have failed, and he blocked all of their attempts. His production methods were also fishy, and the nuns at the temple mentioned that the explanations were clear, 
But the methods were marvelous, and with their abilities they would only have a 50% chance of success, and they would have to charge 100 times the price to meet the production costs. The bishop states that Makoto is just trying to pretend to be an innocent child, and he might even become their trump card in the future. The scene then cuts to Jean talking to Eris back at Makoto's store, and Eris tells him that she can defeat Blue Lizard. Jean is excited to hear this, and he asks her to teach him some incantations, and Makoto returns to the store. He asks Aqua how long Eris and Jean have been getting along like this, and Aqua is hesitant to answer, but Makoto promises to give her some banana milk that they made for the festival if she answers him, and she tells Makoto that they have been going at it for two hours. Makoto then gives her the milk, and she likes it. Afterwards we see Eris giving Jean a lecture on magic, and Jean tries to ask her about Blue Lizard, and before Eris gives away any sensitive information Makoto stops her, and he asks her if she wants to go back to the demi-plane boot camp. Hearing this Eris quickly apologizes to Makoto, and she asks him to have mercy on her. Makoto leaves her to Shiki, and he tells Jean that he shouldn't bother coming to class if he is going to cheat. He then goes to make deliveries, and after finishing up with this he checks out the city's preparation for the festival. He senses that he is being followed, and he pretends not to notice, and he heads into an abandoned alley. His followers then confront him, and he notices that they are assassins from the Assassin Guild. He uses his mana armor to defend himself against them, and he takes most of them out using his fire brids. A single assassin still remains, and Makoto finds out that he is the same one that attacked him earlier. He wonders if he is doing this for revenge, and the assassin states that it's his policy to complete every job. Makoto notices that his blade has been fixed, and the assassin mentions that this was bound to happen as this blade is made from the scales of Mitsuruji the Greater Dragon. Makoto states that the scales of Mitsuruji are a great fit for an assassin, and the assassin attacks him. None of his attacks manage to break Makoto's armor, and Makoto ends the fight by punching him in the gut. He then attacks the assassins to end the matter with Professor Blight once and for all, and afterwards he thinks that he is agitated and he needs a way to calm down. The scene cuts to him doing some archery practice in the demi-plane, and Tomo comes to him. Makoto asks her how her investigation into the demi-plane's climate is going, and Tomo states that she seems to have found an appropriate location to open a mist gate and resolve the issue. She shows him a map, and she mentions that opening a mist gate here is going to produce a climate that's a 95% match for Japan. Makoto notices that the place she is talking about is controlled by demons, and Tomo tells him that they also have a fortress nearby. She mentions that it would be bad to leave traces of activity right before their eyes, and Makoto wonders what they should do. Tomo states that she can clear the area with Makoto's permission, and Makoto asks for some time to think about this, as attacking the demons will earn them their hostility. He states that for now they should enjoy the festival that starts tomorrow, and the scene cuts to Tomo A and Mio checking out the festival, the next day. They are surprised to see that it's so lively, and afterwards Makoto wakes up in his room, and he finds out that he has overslept. He goes to his shop, and he notices that it's quite busy, and the staff are having a hard time keeping up. Makoto wonders where Lime and the new Elder Dwarf is, and Shiki states that they are outside, and they are organizing the line to avoid bothering other shops. Makoto then asks Shiki how sales are, and Shiki mentions that they are nearly done for the day, as adventurers who heard about them through word of mouth are visiting them from across the land. Shiki mentions that he is thinking about distributing numbered tickets or vouchers after they run out of stock, and Makoto thinks that the Merchant Guild did give them some vouchers. Shiki apologizes for not asking this of Makoto sooner, and he mentions that he did try to wake him up, but Mio and Tomo stopped him, and they wanted to let him rest. Makoto states that this must have been tough for Shiki, and he wonders what they are doing right now. Shiki states that they are checking out the festival with Ludo, and Makoto goes to make his rounds after checking the inventory. While leaving he notices a group from Laurel in front of their store, but he is distracted by a rude customer, and he deals with that first. The scene then cuts to Makoto and his friends eating hot pot at Five Irons, and Mio and Tomo alike the food. We see that everyone is enjoying themselves, and Shiki tries to mix mayonnaise in his cream hot pot. Luria then comes there with more of their order, and Makoto asks her if they have enough staff to handle the rush. Luria states that they are fine, and she mentions that Eva is also helping them out. Makoto can't picture her waiting on customers, and he finds out that she is cleaning the dishes in the back. 
Luria then leaves, and Tomoe tells Makoto that his students seem to be working hard, and she hopes that they can give their best at the tournament tomorrow. Makoto states that they should watch the matches together, and he asks them to enjoy the festival for now. The scene then cuts to some emissaries from Laurel talking with the king of Limia in Rosgard, and the emissaries ask the king to return their priestess to them. The king mentions that she is with Hibiki, and her party, and she chose to join them willingly. The emissary states that their human nation has kidnapped the key figure of another nation and they are forcing her into dangerous battle, and this will become a serious issue. The king again reminds her that the priestess is accompanying the hero willingly, and he states that this should make their nation proud. The emissary then accuses Limia of taking the priestess hostage, and she mentions that they should know how important the priestess is to them. The king states that they should send their own forces to guard the priestess if they don't trust them, and after hearing this the emissary states that the priestess cannot be replaced, and she hopes that they can make some progress on this matter while they are staying in this city. She then leaves, and the king thinks that this is ridiculous. He mentions that they are busy preparing for another attack on Fort Stella, and he states that they wouldn't have needed to come here if the empire didn't send their princess. The king mentions that the empire's hero, and Princess Lily is wholly to blame for this, and he wonders what they are planning. The scene then cuts to the five irons, and we see that Makoto's group is totally drunk after partying hard. They are acting like complete fools, and Makoto leaves the restaurant with them, and we see that Lily is keeping an eye on them from afar. Thanks for watching part 13, the rest of the parts will be on my channel. Please like and share the video if you enjoyed it, and make sure to hit the subscribe button, and turn on the notification bell to keep getting new anime recap updates.